public domain. The American Claimant by Mark Twain. Chapter 19. Meantime, the Earl and Hawkins were holding a troubled and anxious private consultation. The Earl said, The mystery that bothers me is, where did it get its other arm? Yes, it worries me, too. And another thing troubles me. The apparition is English. How do you count for that, Colonel? Honestly, I don't know, Hawkins. I don't really know. It is very confusing and awful. Don't you think maybe we've waked up the wrong one? The wrong one? How do you account for the clothes? The clothes are right. There's no getting around it. What are we going to do? We can't collect, as I see. The reward is for a one-armed American. This is a two-armed Englishman. Well, it may be that that is not objectionable. You see, it isn't less than is called for. It is more. And so— But he saw that this argument was weak and dropped it. The friends sat brooding over their perplexities some time in silence. Finally, the Earl's face began to glow with an inspiration, and he said impressively, "'Hawkins, this materialization is a grander and nobler science than we have dreamed of. We have little imagined what a solemn and stupendous thing we have done. The whole secret is perfectly clear to me now, clear as day. Every man is made up of heredities, long-descended atoms and particles of his ancestors. This present materialization is incomplete. We have only brought it down to perhaps the beginning of this century. What do you mean, Colonel? cried Hawkins, filled with vague alarms by the old man's awe-compelling words and manner. This. We've materialized this burglar's ancestor. Oh, don't. Don't say that. It's hideous. But it's true, Hawkins. I know it. Look at the facts. This apparition is distinctly English. Note that. It uses good grammar. Note that. It is an artist. Note that. It has the manners and carriage of a gentleman. Note that. Where's your cowboy? Answer me that. Rossmore, this is dreadful. It's too dreadful to think of. Never resurrected a rag of that burglar but the clothes. Not a solitary rag of him but the clothes. Colonel, do you really mean— The colonel brought his fist down with emphasis and said, I mean exactly this. This materialization was immature. The burglar has evaded us. This is nothing but a damned ancestor. He rose and walked the floor in great excitement. Hawkins said plaintively, It's a bitter disappointment. Bitter. I know it. I know it, Senator. I feel it as deeply as anybody could. But we've got to submit on moral grounds. I need money. But God knows I am not poor enough or shabby enough to be an accessory to the punishing of a man's ancestor for crimes committed by that ancestor's posterity. But, Colonel, implored Hawkins, stop and think. Don't be rash. You know it's the only chance we've got to get the money. And besides, the Bible itself says posterity to the fourth generation shall be punished for the sins and crimes committed by ancestors four generations back that hadn't anything to do with them. And so it's only fair to turn the rule around and make it work both ways. The colonel was struck with the strong logic of this position. He strode up and down and thought it painfully over. Finally he said, There's reason in it. Yes, there's reason in it. And so, although it seems a piteous thing to sweat this poor ancient devil for a burglary he hadn't the least hand in, still, if duty commands, I suppose we must give him up to the authorities. I would, said Hawkins, cheered and relieved. I'd give him up if he was a thousand ancestors compacted into one. Lord bless me, that's just what he is, said Sellers, with something like a groan. It's exactly what he is. There's a contribution in him from every ancestor he ever had. In him there's atoms of priests, soldiers, crusaders, 
poets and sweet and gracious women all kinds and conditions of folk who trod this earth in old old centuries and vanished out of it ages ago and now by act of ours they are summoned from their holy peace to answer for gutting a one-horse bank away out on the borders of cherokee strip and it's just a howling outrage oh don't talk like that colonel it takes the heart all out of me and makes me ashamed of the part i am proposing to wait i've got it a saving hope shout it out i am perishing it's perfectly simple a child would have thought of it he is all right not a flaw in him as far as i have carried the work if i've been able to bring him as far as the beginning of this century what's to stop me now i'll go on and materialize him down to date land i never thought of that said hawkins all ablaze with joy again it's the very thing what a brain you have got and will he shed the superfluous arm he will and lose his english accent it will wholly disappear he will speak cherokee strip and other forms of profanity colonel maybe he'll confess confess merely that bank robbery merely yes but why merely the colonel said in his most impressive manner hawkins he will be wholly under my command i will make him confess every crime he ever committed there must be a thousand do you get the idea well not quite the rewards will come to us prodigious conception i never saw such a head for seeing with a lightning glance all the outlying ramifications and possibilities of a central idea <laughs> it is nothing it comes natural to me when his time is out in one jail he goes to the next and the next and we shall have nothing to do but collect the rewards as he goes along it is a perfectly steady income as long as we live hawkins and much better than other kinds of investments because he is indestructible it looks it really does look the way you say it does indeed look why it is it will not be denied that i have had a pretty wide and comprehensive financial experience and i do not hesitate to say that i consider this one of the most valuable properties i have ever controlled do you really think so i do indeed oh colonel the wasting grind and grief of poverty if we could realize immediately i don't mean sell it all but sell part enough you know to see how you tremble with excitement that comes of lack of experience my boy when you have been familiar with vast operations as long as i have you'll be different look at me is my eye dilated do you notice a quiver anywhere feel my pulse plunk 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 same as if i were asleep and yet what is passing through my calm cold mind a procession of figures which would make a financial novice drunk just the sight of them now it is by keeping cool and looking at a thing all around that a man sees what's really in it and saves himself from the novice's unfailing mistake the one you've just suggested eagerness to realize listen to me your idea is to sell a part of him for ready cash now mine is guess i haven't an idea what is it stock him of course well i should never have thought of that because you are not a financier say he has committed a thousand crimes certainly that's a low estimate by the look of him even in his unfinished condition he has committed all of a million but call it only a thousand to be perfectly safe five thousand reward multiplied by a thousand gives us a dead sure cash basis of what five million dollars wait let me get my breath and the property indestructible perpetually fruitful perpetually for a property with his disposition will go on committing crimes and winning rewards you daze me you make my head whirl let it whirl it won't do any harm now that matter is all fixed leave it alone 
I'll get up the company and issue the stock, all in good time. Just leave it in my hands. I judge you don't doubt my ability to work it up for all it's worth. Indeed I don't. I can say that with truth. All right, then. That's disposed of. Everything in its turn. We old operators go by order and system. No helter-skelter business with us. What's the next thing on the docket? The carrying on of the materialization, the bringing it down to date. I will begin on that at once. I think— Look here, Rossmore. You didn't lock it in. A hundred to one it has escaped. Calm yourself as to that. Don't give yourself any uneasiness. But why shouldn't it escape? Let it, if it wants to. What of it? Well, I should consider it a pretty serious calamity. Why, my dear boy, once in my power, always in my power. It may go and come freely. I can produce it here whenever I want it, just by the exercise of my will. Well, I am truly glad to hear that, I do assure you. Yes, I shall give it all the painting it wants to do, and we and the family will make it as comfortable and contented as we can. No occasion to restrain its movements. I hope to persuade it to remain pretty quiet, though, because a materialization which is in a state of arrested development must of necessity be pretty soft and flabby and substanceless, and, uh, by the way, I wonder where it comes from. How? What do you mean? The Earl pointed significantly and interrogatively toward the sky. Hawkins started, then settled into deep reflection, finally shook his head sorrowfully, and pointed downward. "'What makes you think so, Washington?' "'Well, I hardly know. But really, you can see yourself that he doesn't seem to be pining for his last place.' "'It's well thought, soundly deduced. We've done that thing a favor, but I believe I will plump it a little, in a quiet way, and find out if we are right.' How long is it going to take to finish him off and fetch him down to date, Colonel? I wish I knew, but I don't. I am clear knocked out by this new detail, this unforeseen necessity of working a subject down gradually from his condition of ancestor to his ultimate result as posterity. But I'll make him hump himself, anyway. Rossmore? Yes, dear. We're in the laboratory. Come. Hawkins is here. Mind now, Hawkins. He's a sound, living human being to all the family. Don't forget that. Here she comes. Keep your seats. I'm not coming in. I just wanted to ask, who is it that's painting down there? That? Oh, that's a young artist, a young Englishman named Tracy. Very promising. Favorite pupil of Hans Christian Andersen, or one of the other old masters. Andersen, I'm pretty sure it is. He's going to half-sole some of our old Italian masterpieces. Been talking to him? Well, only a word. I stumbled right in on him without expecting anybody was there. I tried to be polite to him, offered him a snack. Sellers delivered a large wink to Hawkins from behind his hand. But he declined and said he wasn't hungry. Another sarcastic wink. So I brought some apples. Double wink. And he ate a couple of— What? and the colonel sprang some yards toward the ceiling and came down quaking with astonishment. Lady Rossmore was smitten dumb with amazement. She gazed at the sheepish relic of Cherokee Strip, then at her husband, and then at the guest again. Finally she said, "'What is the matter with you, Mulberry?' He did not answer immediately. His back was turned. He was bending over his chair, feeling the seat of it. But he answered next moment, and said, "'Ah, there it is! It was attack!' The lady contemplated him doubtfully a moment, then said, pretty snappishly, "'All that for attack? Praise goodness it wasn't a shingle-nail. It would have landed you in the Milky Way. I do hate to have my nerves shook up so.' And she turned on her heel and went her way. As soon as she was safely out, the Colonel said in a suppressed voice, "'Come!' We must see for ourselves. It must be a mistake. They hurried softly down and peeped in. Sellers whispered, in a sort of despair, It is eating. What a grisly spectacle! 
Hawkins, it's horrible. Take me away. I can't stand it. They tottered back to the laboratory. End of chapter 19